Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking our final look at the number only series of these original pan paperbacks. So uh, these are from numbers 301 up to about number 430, 440, something like that. Um, and uh, most of the numbers in between. I'm missing a few, but not too many. Uh, there's some fantastic books in here, including the very first couple of instances of the Ian Fleming James Bond novels, amongst many, many others. So there's some great, great stuff here and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Right then, so let's get this, uh, this run of pan numbered books off to a start then with a real classic which is number 301 and it's Prelude to Space by Arthur C. Clarke. So I really really enjoy the books of Arthur C. Clarke particularly when I was growing up. Uh, this one is dated 1954. Quite a thin little little tome that one. Um, Pan were great with their uh, sci-fi much more so than um, Penguin were at the period and uh, they really embraced it. So uh, there's some great stuff in sci-fi uh, in Pan. Um, this one's uh, uh, Howard Clues, it's The Long Memory, 302. 303 is Murder in the Muse by Agatha Christie. Four Cases of Hercule Poirot, pretty, pretty beaten up copy of, of that bad boy. Um, 304, The Shrimp and the Anemone, uh, L.P. Hartley. Um, yeah, one of the, apparently this is really good, but... Not one that I've ever read or I'm ever likely to, I have to say. Uh, 305, uh, Calls for Alarm by Eric Ambler. This is one that I had an awful job getting as a penguin, in actual fact. Um, it's one of those ones just after, it was published just after the end of the Second World War, but I managed to get one eventually. Um, this one is uh, Unbroken, Alistair Mars, and the True Story of a Submarine. This is a Second World War. There's a few of those in here. Well, that one looks like it's, uh, what's this? Oh, make your writing a hobby. <laughs> that was by Alistair Mars. 308, Head of a Traveller. Nicholas Blake, a nice little crime title, that. Nice jacket, that as well. Um, John Burke, is it John Burke? 310. Uh, a bit of a classic, this one, a real classic jacket. It's a shame I haven't got a better copy of it, but hey, uh, I don't mind. I'm a Mysterious Affair at Styles uh, by Agatha Christie. Certainly a uh, um, a classic Christie novel, one of my favourites, that one. Night in Babylon, James Wellard. A pro provocative novel of a future liberation. And there you are. Now, as I've been covering these, I've been going up to just number... Uh, like a hundred at a time. Uh, this one I'm going to up to about three, four thirty, four forty when the numbered series came to a close, and then we went into the giants, um, or the great pans rather, rather than the giants. Um, this one's at three one four, the trouble at number seven, um, which is like a, an early true crime title. Three one five. This is great. Now this is a forerunner to the pan book of horror stories, and this is a book of strange stories. Same editor, Herbert Van Fowl, who worked for Pan. Um, a, a nice little collection there. But I would definitely regard this more so than any other as the first pan book of horror stories. Um, there is that very early book of strange stories, uh, supernatural stories. But I think that's the the precursor to the the normal horror series. Um, the Little Madeleine. Famous author's vivid Frank story of her girlhood in Paris. Mrs. Robert Henry. Once again, this had lots of, a few reprints of that one, so it must be fairly good. Um, the Saint Goes West. So this is crossing the Saint with the Western, which was obviously very popular when these books were being published. Um, nice jacket on that one as well. Um, certainly been getting into my uh, Western books lately. 318, Madeleine Grown Up. So this is uh, the follow-up to uh, uh, The Little Madeleine. And this is Madeleine Grown Up. This is her later life. Um, and it says her early life in London. So the other one was her growing up as a child in Paris. Uh, 319 then, Mask of Dust, a novel of motor racing. John Manship White. Whoever he was, eh? I guess he was a bit of a racer, possibly. 
This is uh, that hideous strength, C.S. Lewis, 321. So we've seen his other ones already, Out of the Silent Planet and uh, Voyage to Venus. This is uh, another one in that series. Once again, very sort of early science fiction. Justice at Work, The Human Side of the Law, James Avery Joyce. And that's number 323. And um, Pan did a few of those, um, these like sort of uh, true crime things. It's quite interesting how the genres developed. Uh, this one's The River Line, Charles Morgan. I'm quite sure what that one's about. It looks like a thriller, just a general like light fiction thriller. Um, John McDonnell, this is a crime title, The Drowning Pool. Uh, not the greatest of shape. This one, once again, the crime ones do tend to be quite um, well read when I found them. <laughs> um, three, two, eight, Escaper Hidden by Monks. So this is a, uh, a World War II escape book, um, of which there are many published around this time, particularly by Pam. Um, Dare to be Free by W.B. Thomas, 328. There's another copy of that one. I've probably kept two copies of that because I love escape books. So um, that's why it's a copy to read. Here's um, this one by Airy Neve, which is They Have Their Exits. Airy Neve was uh, a one of the original, in fact, he was the first British officer to escape from Colditz Castle. And um, this is his story of how he went on to do that. Um, I have done a special video on Coldies, which I do suggest you have a look at. And this retells the story of uh, Neve's escape, amongst others. Um, Neve went on to become a um, Conservative MP, and he was uh, the Minister for Northern Ireland, and was actually killed by the IRA in about 1980. 330 is the Consul at Sunset, Gerald Hanley. Three three one is time and time again by James Hilton. You'd be surprised. Three three two. Peter Cheney. This is a nice Conan Doyle. His last bow. Reminiscences of Sherlock Holmes. That's all the threes. Three three three. Really nice uh, jacket, that one. Interestingly, that one's got a sort of a, um, like a glossy sheen to it, which some of them don't. It's interesting that. Some do of those, some don't. 334 was the first of the James Bond books by Ian Fleming. So this is the first edition and the second edition of this particular book. Um, I mean, what can you say about this absolute classic novel? If you've never read Casino Royale, Boy, do I recommend it. It's a fan fantastic book. So let's have a look. I believe this is the first, my copy of the first edition. Yeah, so that's that one. And then this is quite a nice copy of the second edition that I got fairly recently, I say recently, like a 15 years ago. And that's the, the, the first reprint. Um, really, really good. I mean, the, the Bond books are superb. I think Casino Royale is amongst the best of the original novels. I just love it. Um, Three through five then is The Trojan Horse by Hammond Innes. Great cover on that one again. Three through six, He Who Who Goes Home, Morris Edelman. Intrigue, ambition and jealousy in a parliamentary setting. Oh, there you go. Can't wait to try that. <laughs> Another one of those uh, sort of factual ones, No Bail for the Judge, Henry Cecil, 338. 339, another one. Um, this is like a, a film tie-in to the film I Believe in You was based on this book. Court Circular, Experiences of a London Probation Officer. Blimey O'Reilly. Doesn't actually say who that is on the front. No, can't tell you who that actress is. 340, Love Bade Me Welcome, John Ludwig. The Mystery of a Woman's, woman's Murder. 342 is A Man About the House, Francis Brett Young. 343, A Hole in the Ground, Andrew Garve. A Crime Story with, with Underground Setting by Writer of Striking Originality. Oh, there you go, there you go. Sparkling Cyanide, 
Agatha Christie. Once again, a bit of a classic, this one. A lot of people really rave that one. It's a, I think it's a little predictable, but maybe I've just read it too many times. Uh, 346, Daughter of the House, Catherine Gaskin. Nice, uh, interesting jacket on that one. 347 is Happy Odyssey. The memoirs of Lieutenant General Sir Adrian Carton de Wart with a foreword by Sir Winston Churchill. Oh, there we are. So I guess he was, must have worked under Churchill. Saint Overboard, another great saint book. As I said, Pan pretty much published them all um, over the years. I don't think there was many that got left behind. Not a great copy of that one, but just about readable. Um, 349, The Singing Sands, Josephine Tay, an Inspector Grant detective story. 'Throne of Bayonets, Kevin Fitzgerald. Once again, nice, nice bold jacket on that one. That's number 350. 351, Knights of the Range. So Western here by uh, Zane Gray. I read one of his recently, first one I'd ever read. Um, what was it called? Um, Western Union, and it wasn't actually too bad. Um, Another sort of women's sort of title, uh, Romancy, uh, Renee's Daughter, a White Oak novel by Maza de la Roche. Hamadin is again, Madden's Rock, 354. 356 is yet another one of those sort of true crimey ones. A book of trials, personal recollections of the eminent judge of the High Court, Sir Travis Humphreys. Oh, he looks a bundle of fun, doesn't he? Um, this is another one of those ones that's like um, sort of got a laminate to it, which is quite, quite interesting. 357 is a classic Agatha Christie. So this is The Secret Adversary. Um, certainly a, a great Christie title. Another great sci-fi one, but this is um, factual, science fact rather than fiction. Uh, Flight into Space, 354, really nice striking cover there. That's the sort of book I would have been attracted to. Um, when I was growing up, 358, 359. So more ghost stories of an antiquary. M.R. James, so the classic um, compilations these, aren't they, of, of ghost stories and uh, some of those, I have to say, are quite spooky. <laughs> 360, good speaking. How to speak clearly and audibly in public and private. Well, there you go. 361, The Saint in Miami. Another saint, but a bit of a longer one. This, so chances are, and I, I bet you, that's probably got um, three books into one. Because um, Pan did combine a lot of the Leslie Charteris Saint short stories into one sort of longer novel. Um, 362 then, Hatred, Ridicule, Contempt, a book of libel cases. I can't believe, I've got no idea that they did so many of these um, sort of true crime court setting books. I mean, I'm really, really surprised that there's so many of them, but there you go. Uh, Detection Unlimited, Georgia Hare, 363. 'The Road to Endor. Now there is an Endor in Star Wars, but I don't think it's the same Endor. So this is the First World War's most famous escape book with a forward by the author of The Wooden Horse. So there you go. So uh, it's actually another escape novel, but one I actually haven't read. So pop that on the list of my to be read. Um, Surface, The Story of a Submarine at War, Alexander Fullerton. Nice, uh, interesting jacket, that one. 367, The Year of the Lion, Gerald Hanley. 368, Natural Courses, Henry Cecil again, author of No Bail for the Judge. 369, Childhood's End, another great Arthur C. Clarke sci-fi title one of his early ones here not the greatest of covers but still it's cool it's early Arthur C. Clarke and um, you know I really uh, do like him as an author 
370, The Way Some People Die, John McDonald, another real, real great one, that. Three seventy one, the Darblay Mystery, a Doctor Thorndike detective story by Austin Freeman. Three seven one, the Desperate Hours. Three seventy two by Joseph Hayes. Cool stuff. Opening night, Nagia Marsh, a detective story. So three seventy three. They certainly like their genre fiction, didn't they, Pan and. Um, I guess they just went with what sold. I spied for Stalin. Russian's war brides, a Russian war brides dramatic life story by Nora Murray. That's nice, isn't it? With a Stalin in the background there, looking on. Another Jalna novel. And um, once again, I think Pan did pretty much them all. Um, number three seven five, The Building of Jalna, by Mazo de la Roche. Andrew Garve again. So Death and the Sky Above, another sort of a fiction thrillery title, 376. 377, I think this is the first time we've seen Robert Heinlein in Pan, and this is The Green Hills of Earth, one of the early, one of his early classics. I do like, once again, another author I really like, Robert Heinlein. A Surgeon's Heritage, James Harpel, 378. Enthralling Harley Street Experiences. Enthralling, don't you know? <laughs> 379 a big pickup so this was the story of um dunkirk and rescuing all those uh british soldiers from the beaches great one now 380 which is another agatha christie classic um poirot one two buckle my shoe 381 dark wanton by Peter Cheney, quite a simplistic cover compared to the last one, but effective all the same. So I'm just gonna need to pause there and make a little bit more room, so I shall be straight back. There we are, so we've got a bit more room to play with now. So this is Magnet of Doom, um, so a story of murder and scandal by a master of criminal psychology, George S. Simonon. So this is the first sort of Simonon that we've seen. Um, predominantly, these were published by Penguin in the UK, um, but Pan did have a few. Um, but certainly Penguin had the uh, the lion's share of those. But that was number 382. 383, um, so this is A Beauty for Inspector West by John Creasy. Bit of a, you can feel, feel this bit of a, a worn old copy, this one. But hey, it's a copy all the same. And that, that's all that matters to me in a lot of these cases. 385 is another Western, To the Last Man by Zane Grey. Great cover, that one, isn't it? I'm probably going to end up reading some of these westerns over the next uh, year or so. Um, 386, uh, what a beaten up old copy, but it's another saint novel, so Call for the Saint. Uh, absolutely demolished that one, so that's definitely on my list. That, I mean, that's almost like fit for the bin, but I've kept it for now. 387, Quiet Under the Sun, Kevin Fitzgerald. 388 soldier from the wars returning gerard tickle tickle no tickle 391 last voyage by anne davison now this one i believe yeah this one has got amateur amateur uh laminate over it so it's not quite as nice as you might think and inside let's someone's written all those um look at this presented to Mr. Hicks from 3C, Christmas 1956. And it looks like it's got all the, the signatures of his class. That's nice, isn't it? <laughs> Look at that. Brilliant, eh? 392, a classic. Probably, probably the most expensive pan book that exists um well actually no it's not is it, it most valuable that would go to um the first edition of honor majesty's secret service which we'll see later but i have seen this one sell and i've actually seen copies sell for you know two three hundred pounds which is like crazy crazy um i admit it's difficult to get 
but copies shouldn't, you know, if you're patient, you'll be able to pick one up for um, less than a hundred. Um, yeah, the first edition of Moonraker. Certainly a tough, tough book. Certainly more difficult to find than Casino Royale, um, for which I've had a couple of copies through my hands, but that's, that's scarce. Um, 393 then, the second ghost book, uh, edited by Lady Cynthia Asquith. Once again, these are great, and this is something that Pan do so, so well. Really, really nice uh, jacket on that. And in fact, we ought to just check when these are being published. This is 1956 now. Beautiful, beautiful jacket. I just love that one. That's a real, real good book, that. 393. 394 is uh, Kid for Two Farlings, together with Make Me an Offer. So I believe that is Sid James, and that is Diana Doors. I'm not sure who uh, who the young, young kid is. But this was a, another movie tie-in, so Sid James was massively prolific um, at this time. He seemed to have been in everything, um, never out of work. And Diana Doors was an upcoming starlet. Um, 395 is The Curse of the Bronze Lamp by Carter Dixon, an HM detective story. 395. 396, Five Against the House. An ingenious thriller of casino robbery by Jack Finney. There you are. I wonder if that was... Uh, no, it wouldn't have been on the back of Ocean's Eleven because even the original 60s one hadn't come out yet. So interesting, interesting, a casino robbery. 397, The Last Enemy, a famous book by the Battle of Britain fighter pilot Richard Hillary. Oh, there you go. Fairly interesting jacket on that one. 398, Good Handwriting and How to Acquire It. Mine's probably got worse over the years, but there you are, book on handwriting. Nothing was taboo for Pan. Genevieve, the story of the film. James Dylan White with film photographs, number 399, this one. A little photo insert in there. Number 400 was The Gypsy in the Parlour by Marjorie Sharp. And we're going to power on through to the end of the numbered series. So 401 is Top Secret Mission. A girl agent tells how she traced missing German atom scientists. Well, there you go. 401. 402, according to the evidence, it's that guy again, Henry Cecil. Quite interesting with the news rack in the background there. <laughs> 403, The Saint and Mr. Teal. Another Leslie Charteris book. 404, Sea Wife and Biscuit. The novel filmed as Sea Wife. Now this does ring a vague bell. Yeah, I thought so. So that is an actual fact, Joan Collins. Yeah, there's a better photo of her there. Joan Collins was in that movie. 405, we've got the White Oak Brothers. This is the Jalna author, Maza de la Roche. Or Rocher. Oh no, that's a Ferrero Rocher, isn't it? 406, The Odd Flamingo, a crime novel by Nina Baldwin. Nice copy of that one. That's a nice, uh, sort of fresh, fresh one with a nice spine on it. If only they were all like that. That's number 406. 407, Girl in Waiting, Chit of a Girl by Georgia Simon. And again, what's a chit of a girl? What do they mean? What does it mean? 408, enjoy your gardening. Now you look at this one, this has actually been trimmed and it's quite obvious. If we compare it to um, uh, the Simonon, you can see it's shorter. And that happens now and again in, in publishing. Whether this was trimmed for a reason, I don't know. I don't know if all copies were trimmed, um, but it's one of those, those weird Instances, 1957, a photo jacket. An expert advises how to avoid needless work in your garden. Well, there you are. Is she the expert? Who can tell? Who can tell? 409, Killer Mine happened in this. I think that's one of his uh, more famous ones. Nice jacket again. 410, John Ross MacDonald, Ivory Grin, a Lou Archer detective story. Brilliant jacket on that one. Very, very nice. 
411, they come by appointment. Experiences of a London surgeon, George Sava. Well, if he's coming by appointment, she's obviously invited in there. Why is she looking so distressed? That's what we'd like to know. 412, death in captivity, a prison camp detective story. So that genre of escaped prisoners and POWs, it was so popular, it even had a detective story set within that environment. So there you go, eh? Michael Gilbert, 412. 413, The Humankind by the author of From the City, From the Plough. Another wartime, uh, wartime one. Looks like Americans possibly uh, caught in the British, British ladies. You'll die in Singapore. I hope not. 2,000 Mile Escape from the Japanese. Charles McCormick. Another escape book. It looks like he was escaping from Japanese captivity. 415. Defender's Triumph. Edgar Lustgarten. Four famous murder trials in which the brilliance of the defending barrister secured the prisoner's acquittal. Well, there you go. 416. Love and Marriage. How to make the most of your life. <laughs> You're going to laugh at it. Brilliant. I really like the design of that, the, the green uh, cover in that. That's great. Dear, oh dear. you got to admit, Pan published anything, didn't they? Absolutely anything. Right, 417. Then a soldier, Geoffrey Cotterell. Army life as it really was. Quite an interesting cover there. 418, The Case of the Dubious Bridegroom, Earl Stanley Gardner. Nice, nice jacket, that. Bit of a femme fatale thing going on there. Nice copy of this. This one, it's one of those odd ones which has got, it's like laminated. It's, I know this is a nice copy, but this is really un, unusually nice, that one. How weird, yeah. 419, great cover. Appointment with Death, the Poirot mystery. Nice, bright. Agatha Christie novel. Um, this is one of those ones that's set in and around Egypt, I do believe. 420, Earthlight, A Story of Conflict on the Moon by Arthur C. Clarke. I really wish, I wish I had a better copy of this one because that is a great, great jacket. It really um, typifies 50s sci-fi, although this is sort of tail end 50s, isn't it? 1957, so yeah, good stuff that, Earthlight. 421, Inspector West Makes Haste, John Creasy, 421. 422, The Spoletta Story, James Dillon White. Love, Fear, Hate and Conflict Among the Sicilian Bandits. Well, okay, I've been to Sicily. I didn't see any bandits. 43. Life in Our Hands. Nursing Sisters War Experiences by Pamela Bright. Don't remember this one at all. Good stuff. 425. The Golden Summer. Anne Duffield. Looks like a, a woman's sort of romancy title. Last few now. It's different in July. Kevin Fitzgerald. Uh, let's look at that. Thriller. 427. Miss, Miss Pym Disposes. A crime story by Josephine Tay. Four thirty one. The Perfectionist. Lane Kaufman. Who spoiled a perfect crime? Who indeed? 432. Beaten up copy of a uh, Dark Interlude by uh, another one by Peter Cheney. 433, No Man's Mistress by the author of Surface, Alexander Fullerton. Last few now. I'm spoiling you today. 435 is The Noonday Devil, Ursula Curtis. What a great jacket that one is, isn't it? By uh, Rex. He looks mean, doesn't he? you got to say, he looks mean. 436, Sinners and Shrouds, Jonathan Latimer. Another great cover. Ah, that would be why it's by Pef. It's the first time I've seen his signature in a while. So it's a Pef cover. He's great, isn't he? 
He is so, so good. When was this one published? 1958 now. How cool is that? So an early, early PEF. Oh, so good. 436. So 438 is The Saint Steps In, a real nice uh, Leslie Charteris there um, with a Rex, Rex cover, nicely composed, really uh, sort of get into the action there. Gay, debonair, tough. The Saint jumps in to further adventures. And the very last one I've got in this numbered only series is number 439. And we've seen his name a few times today, isn't it? Andrew Garve. And that's the Megstone plot. A fraud to catch a fortune. There we are. So that ends my run of looking at all the numbered pan books. I know I haven't got them all, but I've certainly got a fair wedge in there. Um, so that's that for those. Um, the next series then we're going to have a look at is the great pans. So these are the G and GPs. And basically these are the ones which were not two shillings. These were two shillings and six. Um, and we will be having a look at those next time in about a month's time or so. And um, we'll do the first um, the first hundred or so of them. Haven't got quite so many of those because this numbered series, what I've tried to concentrate on when I've been looking for pans, um, and when I've been at shows and that I've tried to fill in my numbered only series as well. But I've got a fair run of giants as well um, and great pans. So um, there's plenty more uh, to look at, including loads more uh, James Bond and Saint books and that. And that, as I said, that'll be in a, a few weeks time. So if you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it a thumbs up. Do please consider subscribing for regular vintage paperback coverage. I've got loads on the channel already and there's still a fair bit to get through. Um, and I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.